We are so grateful to our brothers and sisters in the Diocese of Orlando because they have made an excellent presentation on not only what we can and can't do when we come back to Mass be temporarily because of this pandemic, but also the reasons why. And we're going to view that video as soon as I finish with this introduction. We're so grateful to them. We thank them for their generosity in allowing us to share it. It has been truly difficult for us to not go to Mass during this time of the pandemic. Participation in Mass is a testimony of belonging and of being faithful to Christ and to His Church. As Catholics, we have an obligation to attend Mass on Sundays. This obligation is not a burden, but total gift. God's Holy Spirit, active in our lives, leads us to worship in spirit and in truth within the assembly of God's people. When we return to public worship, we will need to respect the restrictions and guidelines that the health professionals have provided. Choices will need to be made on the part of each individual. The obligation to attend Mass on Sunday is lifted until further notice. Christ suffers with those who cannot come to Mass during the pandemic. However, as Jesus taught us, suffering can lead to redemption. We will be called to make certain sacrifices when we return to the assembly of the church. When you arrive to enter the church, only the main doors of the church will be open. Any side or back entrances will be locked. It may seem an inconvenience to you as you come to the church from the parking lot. However, it is out of great care for you that we limit the number of entrances so as to prevent the spread of germs. If you are handicapped or disabled in any way, park as close as possible to the main entrance or have someone drop you off at the main entrance. Holy water stoops will be empty. Upon entering the church, we have been used to approaching the baptismal font or holy water stoop, dipping our fingers into the water and blessing ourselves as a remembrance of our baptism. Health safety restrictions will not allow us to use the sacramental of holy water in this way. However, it is most appropriate to continue the gesture of making the sign of the cross when entering the church, remembering that we are God's adopted sons and daughters, baptized in Christ Jesus, in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. During the celebration of Mass, after the proclamation of the Gospel, the celebrant offers a homily, the oldest form of preaching used by the apostles and fathers of the church in addressing the faithful. The homily offered by the celebrant may be shorter than usual, but its purpose, to share the meaning of the sacred scripture, will be given no matter the length. This will allow more time between the celebration of Mass for dismissing the people and preparing to welcome those to the next Mass. Normally, collections are taken by passing a basket during the celebration of Mass. This will not be possible during this period of restrictions. Our monetary gifts are really part of a larger aspect of the liturgy called the preparation and presentation of the gifts. Together with the gifts of bread and wine, the faithful present their gifts for the support of the Church and her mission. Parishes may consider placing large baskets at the foot of the altar so that during the procession with the gifts, individuals may come forward, place their gifts into the basket, and return to their seat. Or, baskets may be accessible upon entering the Church, where you are able to place your gift in the basket upon arrival in the Church. Consider electronic giving or place your donation in the mail. Participate as your parish allows. All of these modes of giving reflect the inner spiritual disposition of leaving our gifts at the altar of God in the holy sacrifice of the Mass. We must be mindful of those who will be absent during this time of limited capacity to gather due to social distancing and high-risk health conditions. Our solidarity with those who cannot be physically present is essential during this time. Those who are unable to come to worship and experience the sacrament offer their experience as a type of fast. Such fasting, Pope Benedict XVI writes, 
could help people toward a deepening of their personal relation to the Lord in the sacrament. It could be an act of solidarity with all those who have a yearning for the sacrament but cannot receive it. Spiritual hunger, like bodily hunger, can be a vehicle of love. Indeed, the times when we are separated from Christ's sacraments can be opportunities for unnumbered graces. The exchange of peace before the reception of Holy Communion acknowledges that Christ, whom we receive in the sacrament, is already present in our neighbor. This gesture expresses the gospel truth that communion with God in Christ is enjoyed in communion with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We are members, one with another, in the body of Christ. When the deacon or priest invites us to offer each other a sign of peace, it will be appropriate to offer a reverent bow and or a verbal greeting, the peace of Christ be with you. During this time of pandemic, it is most reasonable and prudent for the safety of all that Holy Communion be distributed to the congregation in the form of the sacred host, the bread that is consecrated and becomes the body of Christ. The church teaches that Christ, whole and entire, is received in each of the consecrated elements. We receive the Christ, the Lord himself, his body and blood, sacrificed on Calvary for the forgiveness of our sins and raised from the dead and ascended to the right hand of the Father. When we receive the sacred host, we will receive in the hand. When receiving the Eucharist in the hand, the communicant approaches the minister with one hand resting on the palm of the other. After responding, Amen, the communicant steps to the side and reverently places the Eucharist in his or her mouth. Let us remember and take to heart the words of St. Cyril of Jerusalem. They should make a throne of their hands, laying the right upon the left to form a throne for the king, forming at the same time a cross. Out of care for the priest, deacon, or the extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion who offer us communion, it is important to know that Holy Communion on the tongue creates several health hazards during this time of pandemic. Therefore, all communicants will receive the sacred host in the hand. We do this out of a sense of care and concern for both ministers and communicants. As adopted sons and daughters of a loving and merciful God, we are always mindful of Christ's sacrifice on the cross as the ultimate price paid for our sins. As human beings, we are well aware that we can falter and go astray. Yet God, the Father of mercies, never tires of calling us to himself. In a sense, we are continually being converted through repentance. By sharing in the sufferings of Christ, enduring our own difficulties, performing acts of mercy and charity, we become to the world a sign of conversion to God. This is why we have been given a great gift in the sacrament of penance. Celebrating the sacrament of penance is different from what is known as spiritual direction. A spiritual director might be called a kind of coach who offers advice and counsel to an individual in a non-sacramental setting. The celebration of the sacrament of penance is not where this type of interaction is observed. However, it is a celebration of God's mercy and forgiveness that sacramentally restores us to right relationship with God and one another in Christ Jesus. The sacrament of penance will be offered according to your parish capabilities. Individual sessions are to be kept to a maximum of five minutes to allow as many as possible to participate in the sacrament of penance, as well as to observe social distancing and health protocols. Confessionals are not to be used. Rooms or offices will be prepared to accommodate an appropriate distance between the confessor and the penitent. We should also be mindful that the church teaches and decrees that, when it arises from a love by which God is loved above all else, contrition is called perfect, contrition of charity. Such contrition remits venial sins. It also obtains forgiveness of mortal sins if it includes the firm resolution to have recourse to sacramental confession as soon as possible. 
During these days, when access to the sacrament of penance will be limited and difficult to maneuver, we must take hope and solace in the teaching of the Church in this regard. We are called to care for God's creation. While we are experiencing the pandemic, we have come to understand that caring for God's creation also means preservation of our natural resources. To praise God in this way, parishes will not be printing bulletins for distribution at church and will offer them online at their parish websites so they are easily available to you. We are joyful to see those neighbors at church whom we have not seen for some time. However, because of social distancing, we ask that you weigh from afar and leave the church property to share in fellowship. Likewise, coffee or donut stations after Mass or resources to view will not be available.